I once did a little gig in a woman's uh, prison of, they're all heroin addicts, uh, and by teaching them that they have receptors for the heroin, and that the more heroin that they take, their ability to make their own internal endorphins, their own internal heroin, basically starts to decline. And then the receptors start to become subsensitive, or there's actually less of them. So there's these actual changes, and then this new information about how less brain cells are being made, so that people get kind of, in all addictions, they get stuck in old patterns. The person's mental life becomes dominated by pain, such that everything that they perceive is colored by the pain. And sometimes, every way that they react and everything that they do becomes all about their pain. One of the things about receptors is they change in their sensitivity. If a given receptor for a given drug or internal juice is being bombarded uh, for a long time at a high intensity, it will literally shrink up. There will be less of them, or it will be hooked up in such a way that it is desensitized or downregulated. So the same amount of drug or internal juice will elicit a much smaller response. attitude and the same chemistry over and over again on a daily basis when that cell finally decides to divide when it produces a sister cell or a daughter cell that next cell will have more receptor sites for those particular emotional neuropeptides and less receptor sites for vitamins minerals nutrients fluid exchange or even the release of waste products or toxins now, all aging is a result of improper protein production. What happens when we age? Our skin gets, loses elasticity. Well, elastin is a protein. What happens to our enzymes? We don't digest as well. What happens to our synovial fluid? Those are proteins that become brittle and stiff. What happens to our bones? They become thin. So all aging is a result of improper protein production. So then the question arises, does it really matter what we eat? And when, does nutrition really have an effect if the cell doesn't even have the receptor sites after 20 years of emotional abuse to even receive or let in the nutrients that are necessary for its health? If we know the thoughts of a person, we will best know them by their addiction, their continuous over 24 hours in a continuum of what emotions they display in their body. We shall know their thoughts. Never, ever reincarnate to the I love you so much people. We always reincarnate to the situations of why we hate ourselves.
it makes you wonder, doesn't it? If thoughts can do that to water, imagine what our thoughts can do to us. No one has ever came along and ever given you sufficient, intelligent knowledge about your beautiful self, how you work from the inside out. Why do you have addictions? Because you have nothing better. You have dreamt of nothing better because no one has ever taught you how to dream better. There's data now that when people are addicted to whether it's cocaine, heroin, nicotine, alcohol, um, all of them seem to share a property of blocking the growth of new brain cells. And yet, it can completely come back when the drug taking has stopped. Oh, poopy. If you don't see the traps, you have to go through the crap until you see the traps. Because if you don't see it, it's your only teaching machine. It's your only way for you to come to understand something new. So the universe brings these things to your door. And there is learning in them for you if you are willing to reflect upon them and think beyond the rigid mindset. about we disappearing I don't mean that we physically disappear what I mean is is that we move out of the area of the brain that has to do with our personality that has to do with our association to people our association to places our association to things and times and events we don't exist in the associative centers in our brain that reaffirms our identity and reaffirms our personality we now have science to back up what our thoughts do and how they make our bodies weak. A lot of scientists who are actually studying this with behavioral kinesiology and other ways, showing that thoughts make your body weak. And thoughts pretty much create your reality. They create what you're going to, what you're going to think about yourself. If you're fat that you think you're wonderful, you'll be wonderful. But most women are, we're, we're compared all the time with impossible images from Barbie to, to models. And so we think that our, our whole currency is how we look and how other people are gonna perceive us. And we're always up against impossible standards. What is relative to their own emotional addiction are movies and dramas and news and all the media that is so beautiful today and providing people with experiences without having to be there. And yet, and yet, that does, does not define human greatness.